most people go their whole lives without ever truly expressing themselves. We have stories to tell, ideas to share, dreams of the future, visions and versions of ourselves that want permission to live and breathe in the physical world, but we do not let them. Instead, we silently coach ourselves to sit down, follow the rules, be more reasonable, tend to our responsibilities, and keep the peace. 64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Welcome to the Book of the Week series. Every week as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. My name is Igor S.F. Walker. Today we look at the power of writing it down. A simple habit to unlock your brain and reimagine your life by Alison Fallon. So, how about you slow down and relax? Reduce all that noise for just a bit. Make that choice and decide to listen. In this video, we look at using your words as one of the most powerful means you do have for unlocking your life. Tried and tested practices for getting started, staying inspired, and using this simple habit to shift how you feel and show up in your life. Pen and paper is simply the method, but the reward is the real magic. New depths of self-discovery, creativity, and intentionality for living. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I do have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. <clears throat> what is the cost? of holding back what is trying to be expressed through you. Words are powerful. Words can start a revolution or send a vital message to someone who desperately needs it. With a word, we can calm our own fears or the fears of someone we love. Words can change everything. Words are everything. Yet most of us are not using them to their fullest potential or to our greatest advantage. Think about it. Words are the most powerful tool we have to create a life we long for. I can tell you with surefire confidence that the reason we get stuck in the negative patterns has nothing to do with willpower, discipline, goodwill, or our work ethic. It has everything to do with our brains. Our brains have mastered the skill of automating behavior to make it as easy as possible. The path this message takes is called a neural pathway. So when that little messenger has traveled the path a hundred times, or a thousand times, or ten thousand times, it becomes well-worn enough that your brain doesn't even have to stop to think before you take out the trash or judge your mother-in-law. It just does it. The question, of course, is how do you get from a place of stuck to a place of bliss? How? through the incredibly simple practice of writing things down. We write for all kinds of reasons, to communicate a message, to encourage a friend, to ask someone for a favor, to ask a question, to deliver information so that you do not forget something, like an item on a grocery list, for example. Maybe write in a journal where you can 
fully process your thoughts or your feelings about a subject. Or maybe you write down your goals as a regular practice. Maybe you write down a few things you are grateful for each morning. Or maybe you have to write a report for work. Either way, we are all drawn to the process of writing for one reason or another. Intuitively, we know writing clarifies our thinking, gets us in touch with a higher wisdom, connects us to other people, calms our nerves, and also helps us make something usable from even the most horrific situations. You will not meet many people who do not have the impulse to write. The urge to write is almost completely universal. We often evaluate, over-evaluate what it means to write something, to demystify the act of putting words on paper. I want to introduce you to a term, expressive writing. The simplest definition I can offer is this. Expressive writing is the act of sharing your deepest thoughts and feelings about a subject on a page. <coughs> now, without space, you will not be able to write. This might sound painfully obvious, but you would be surprised how many people intuitively think it is the other way around. If I had something to write about, they say, then I will make space. Unfortunately, creative energy doesn't work this way. The words that have the power to change our brains, our lives, our families, our world, flow where there is space for them to flow. If you do want enough clarity to begin to use words as a way to change your life and then change the world, if you want to tap into the inner wisdom that's waiting like a deep well inside of you, if you want the clarity and the power and the stamina and the abundance that comes from writing things down, you do need to make space in your physical environment, space in your interior world of thoughts and emotions, and space on your calendar. Make space for yourself. Give yourself this gift. Creative energy fills the space we make for it. Now, take a minute and consider your physical environment. Is it messy? Is it impeccably clean? Is it scattered and disorganized? Is it sparsely decorated? Is it cold and sterile? Is it warm? Consider how your physical space might just be a reflection of your mental and emotional space. People always want to know if this is a forever kind of practice. Do I still make space in my life for expressive writing? Do I do this every day, forever? And the short answer is no, of course, no, not. I do not sit down and write every single day the same way I do not go to the gym for a workout every single day. The point is not to have a perfect attendance to your practice. The point is to have a practice, period. And then to know that whenever you need it, writing is there for you. There is a certain drama involved in getting our words onto the page. We'll find every reason to wiggle our way out of it. The more important the words are to our own evolution, the greater the drama. The question then becomes, how do we make that drama matter for something? Embrace the drama of the blank page. You have to love the drama. You have to hate the drama. You have to embrace the drama and have no tolerance for the drama, all at the same time, just like you do with some of your friends. Engaging with the blank page is actually a reminder that we do get an opportunity to start from scratch every day. 
in a physical sense, this might not feel true, but in a spiritual sense, it is very much true. Each day, we do start over. So, do not get too attached to what we did yesterday, be it good or bad. Just put some new words on a blank page. Oddly enough, drama has a way of focusing your attention. Ask someone in crisis what they had for dinner last night and they will not remember. Like a laser, drama points us towards what needs our attention. It helps us zero in on our target. The condition here and the contradiction is not lost on me. Drama distracts us, but it also forces us to pay attention. What will writing do again and again? It will call us back to ourselves. It will make us the strongest, most resilient, most beautiful version of ourselves. The truest us that has been there all along. Great writing begins with great questions. There is a reason for this. Our brains are wired to ask questions and then look for answers. From an evolutionary perspective, that has actually helped drive our behavior to support our own survival. Where will I find food to eat today? How will I protect myself and my family? Who can I trust? Who is an enemy? Who will I marry? What career will I choose? What will retirement look for me? Questions. We can learn to improve our life stories the same exact way we improve our writing, by starting with better questions. The questions we do ask, they drive the answers we get. They actually set us in motion on one or more of these loops. Writing not only reveals to us the questions that we are already asking, it also gives us an opportunity to ask better ones. First, if you are wondering what to write about, always start with questions. Second, if you are wondering why you feel like writing about something in particular, ask yourself, what is the question that is under the topic? And then finally, if you do come to the blank page and you do not feel like you have anything to say, consider that your lack of words might actually be a lack of questions. If what you are writing seems dull and uninteresting, even to you, see if you can write some questions instead of some answers. Make no mistake. To access the power of our own words, we will have to go into our deepest darkness. We have to go in, into the cave, and slay our dragons as the metaphor goes, so we can then come out on the other side and call ourselves brave. You cannot pretend to kill the dragons. You cannot fake the kind of courage it takes to face danger like that. You cannot tiptoe around the mouth of the cave and then boast about your warrior's strength and resolve. That would be ridiculous. Now, the same is true if you want to find your voice. You either really do it or you do not do it. There's no such thing as sort of doing it. Now, the research shows there are three elements that the writing needs to cover in order to have the power of change. Facts, thoughts, and feelings. More specifically, the facts of whatever story you're writing, your thoughts about those facts, and then your feelings about those thoughts. The cause and effect go like this. Things happen to us in our lives. We then have thoughts about those things. Then we have feelings 
that actually stem from those thoughts, those feelings actually then cause us to behave or act in a certain way, and then those behaviors, they actually lead to outcomes. Number one, facts. What are the facts of what happened? Facts are the objective details of what happened. Who, what, where, when. Story. Number two, story. What is the story I am telling myself about what happened? We create stories based on our thoughts about the facts of what has happened to us. These stories stem from our interpretation of what happened. Then feelings. How do I feel about what happened and about the story that I am telling myself? Name a feeling. It is actually to talk about where you feel it in your body. When you're scared, your heart starts racing. When you are embarrassed, your face gets flushed. Number four, actions. What did I do to engage or disengage with what I have felt? Being the brilliant people that we are, we have developed elaborate defenses against feeling unpleasant emotions like anxiety, anger, or shame. To keep from feeling this feeling in my body, the action I take is dot, dot, dot. And then finally, the result. What was the outcome of my chosen action? This is what happens as a result of your actions. For example, if your action responds to shame, is to hide. The result just might be that you are isolated and alone. Sometimes when we are stuck, we actually need to hire a therapist. Other times we simply need to tell ourselves the truth. We might avoid the truth, dance around the truth, be terrified of the truth, or like to spin the truth, but the truth has a powerful reputation for getting us out of our ruts. If you are feeling stuck, start by telling the truth. The truth, as terrible as it can be, has a remarkable reputation for getting us out of our ruts. The truth cuts to, through the bullshit that is getting in the way of the real you. Truth wakes us up and helps us pay attention. We can only know the truth about others if they choose to share it with us. But that's okay. It's the truth about us that transforms us. Writing like life is full of uncertainties, full of cloudiness and confusion, full of questions for which we do not yet have the answers. But if and when we do enter into the writing process and we do it for the same reason we engage in the process of shaping our lives, we do it because there is an invitation that actually can be accepted or denied. It is your choice. There are no guarantees and there are no mandates. The real question is, do you want to try and then in trying intentionally shape your life? Affect labeling. When you actually name a feeling, your brain becomes more active in the part responsible for control over your emotional states, the right prefrontal cortex, and less active in the part responsible for your body's fear response, the amygdala. The simple process of naming your emotional experience helps you regulate the emotion and then move into the more logical, higher reasoning part of your brain. This is why kids who are throwing a temper tantrums in the grocery store, do not often turn to their mothers and say things like, Mom, I am actually exhausted and overwhelmed by all the stimulation in this place, which is why I am acting overly distressed that you will not let me have that candy bar. 
they simply do not have the language to understand their experience like that. But as adults, we do have the language. The more language we have to name our emotional states, the more control we actually have over those powerful emotional states. No wonder writing frees us up to think more clearly and then come up with solutions to our own problems. Writing can help us manage negative emotional states, process our lives, and even heal from trauma. One of the reasons writing does this, I believe, is because it invites us and it even requires us to look at our pain in a new way. And for a long time, it requires contemplation. This process of sitting with your pain is the very reason writing can heal your life. And it is the very reason you will avoid it. You are at a crossroad here. You get to choose between staying comfortable but stuck in the same old loop and pushing through discomfort to your own breakthrough. And there you have it, the power of writing it down. Please do help out, it is easy, simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Leave a comment and do share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So you buy it and you read and you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.